Hey, what's up, Carl? Uh, quick demo video for you for your Phoenix Props Jedi Killer. All right, just got this done. I got this done late last night, um, so I didn't have it in me to make a demo yesterday. And then uh, when I sat down to do one this morning, um, I noticed there was something off on it and I had to go back and fix it. So that's why it's taken me uh, so long this morning to get this because I wanted to make sure, obviously, this was right before I sent it out. Um, but it's all done now. Uh, and we can go over it, right? Uh, install with a Profi B2. It's got uh, Robert Sotomayor's uh, chassis in it from Sorox Sabres that allows for a 28 millimeter speaker. Um, it's a removable chassis, and then you have removable battery with that as well. So um, it's a little bit better than the 24 millimeters or the 22 millimeter speakers because it makes this guy uh, super loud. And you're running a Smuggler's Outpost Elite speaker in here. Um, you've got your two pixels on your your uh, crystal chamber so there's one on the bottom and one on the top and you'll see that lights up really evenly when I flip it on here in a second uh, you sent me the stock v2s but I went ahead and upgraded you to the stock v3s for your main PCB and then you've got a two button setup so your top switch is your activation and your bottom switch down here is your auxiliary now this um, so this pillbox piece right here was meant to be adhesed down uh, I just put it in with some e6000 that way you can take it off if you want to um, because I know you said you had some weathering to do uh, so I did not permanently adhese this pillbox down uh, same goes for the clamps for all this wire so you've got uh, six clamps that are holding all this wire on uh, I did not adhese those down so while I did press fit them down they are loose and they will come up uh, so that you can take this wire off before you weather this guy up and then when you put these back on you can just adhese them in. Uh, the only one that is different is this one here in the middle. It's a little bit longer because it had to reach that thin neck area. But other than that, I took the other five and I cut them to basically the same size. So it shouldn't matter where you put them. Um, and then I left the wire back here just a little bit long. Then I'll show you here in a second so that you could cut that down to the length that you, um, uh, you know, to the length that you like. So that, well, I'll just show you right now. I left it about that long. And I'm just tucking it in there, which is what you would do anyway. But I wanted you to have the option of cutting that wherever you wanted to cut it. Uh, because as you know, once I cut it, then that's it. So that's what we did there. Uh, this is an extremely tight cram food build. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it can be a little bit difficult to get the chassis in. Uh, it can be difficult to put the battery in. It's not difficult. There's just some tricks to it so let's go over it okay so first thing you want to do is unscrew this pommel piece right here and we'll do that real quick don't drop it i caught it so <laughs> this is the fourth one that i've done um, on the previous ones that i've done uh, what i did was i explained to people to come in here with your ring finger come in here and untwist this guy um, I did something a little bit different this time, so it's going to allow you to use kind of like a tool to come in here and twist this uh, or to untwist it and to twist it back. I'm basically just using my wire cutters right now to come in here from this slot and untwist it and pops out. We're only using about a thread's worth. So once you do that and this piece is loose right here, you can pull this all the way out. And then you see your speaker right there. So this claw is static. I put it on with some CA glue. So when you go to uh, cup your hand and go like that to get your chassis out, it pops right out, by the way. Just, just uh, you know, be careful you don't stab yourself because I have done that. That's why I'm saying it. I've done it twice, actually. <laughs> so And it hurts. So once you get your chassis out, um, you can see that PCB in there. That stays in there. I did put a spacer right here. I 3D printed this spacer. I gave myself about 0.19 inches extra on the handle length uh, so that this chassis system would work that's just a little modification that i have to do that i had talked to you about before i even started this guy so once you get your chassis out here's your chassis um, one of the most cram food chassis out there i think i mean rob did a, 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 a you know an amazing job modeling this up um, so that you can have a 28 millimeter speaker and a removable battery but um, you know the trade-off is the wire management's got to be on point or this board won't fit. So although the board is down into the shelf nice and neat, I did use a little bit of E6000 on both sides of the board to help keep it in place. Um, and you'll see that um, 
you know, when you get it in person. I mean, actually, you won't see the E6000. I was very, I was very sparing with it and use it only on the side of the board. So you probably won't even be able to, probably wouldn't even be able to tell it was there unless I told you. So I tried to make sure it was nice and neat. Um, there is your removable battery. So you can see, I mean, you know, the, the positive side of your battery butts up right against the underside of this 14-pin uh, connector. There's just, like, no room in there to do anything, but we got it. Um, I did have to cut some springs off the negative side um, uh, of the negative terminal. The battery fits in here uh, very tight, right? So when we put it in, we can snap it in, but we're going to need a tool to take it out, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and put a battery in right now. Don't be afraid to snap it in. And then you have this small ring right here that's glued in front of your speaker. And this is what I had to go back and change this morning. Um, I could have swore when I did it yesterday and I tested it, I didn't have any sound distortion. But when I went to do a video this morning and tested it, I had just a little bit. Uh, my ring was too small. So there's a fine line of this ring being out enough to not cause distortion, but small enough to where it still allows this pummel piece to screw in. And I had to play around with that probably about three or four different prints until I was satisfied with, with the um, uh, with the width, right? It's the exact uh, minimum width I could possibly get away with and not have the speaker drum rattling up against the pommel piece. But anyway, now we've got that battery in. I do have motion controls on this, so it might go off when you're putting it in the saber. That's okay. Uh, I do have a copy of your config file that's on your SD card in case you ever want to change it. Uh, the sound font that you gave me actually had two different variations, so they're both on here. So we're going to slide that in, and it's going to go like that. You're not even going to be able to see your threads right now. Uh, it, it's just an extremely tight fit, right? But when you go to put this on, this only goes in one way because it has to go through this claw, right? And then uh, if you look at this piece, uh, there's an indent, if I can get it in the light, there's an indentation right here that slides over the claw. So it only goes in one way. You can slide this in all the way just like that and then you're left with this loose piece that you have to put on. Now in the past, these, uh, this red piece and this piece that actually has to slide in and screw in were two different pieces, but I adhesed your threads on these two pieces to make it one piece so it would be easier for you um, to not have to worry about unscrewing one thing but not unscrewing the other. So this is where you're probably not going to be able to get it with your finger because you do have to put some pressure on it while you're screwing it in. So again, I am using my wire cutters just to come in here and just kind of assist me in grabbing that, that thread that I need. I only use about one thread on this guy. That's, a, that's all that will screw in and it engages all those pins and that's all we need. So now that it's like that, I can come back here and I can screw in my pommel. And we'll do that right now. So the pommel will screw on all the way, no matter if you take this piece and you use one thread or use all the threads, this piece goes in all the way, the profile stays the same, right? And then we'll take this wire, and for now, I know it's kind of long, uh, we're just tucking it in there. So now, twist off. Well, we can come over here and use the power button. Got to put a little bit of oomph in it, right? And then the bottom, let me get it on camera, the bottom auxiliary. And then we can turn it off by just pressing that as well. Now this takes a one inch diameter blade, so I'm going to throw my one inch in here. Um, you have your blade retention is right here inside one of these grooves. You can kind of see it right there. Your kit comes with its own Allen key. I like using mine. It's a little bit easier, uh, but obviously everything will stay in your box and come with you or it, it'll be shipped to you, right? But we do need to lock this down. Now your crystal is wired in line with your blade. Um, that is something that I have to do when I use a removable battery setup, or I'm sorry, if it's a removable chassis, um, and I'm using these Smuggler's Outpost PCBs, I do wire the crystal chamber in line with the blade.
And you can see that. Hopefully that's picking up good on camera. Maybe you can see it on my shirt. It is a nice red unstable. You got battle mode. You can see your blade lock up right here until you pull away from it. The top tap auxiliary for blaster bolt deflex. Turn it off. And then to get to your soundtrack, you just hold down the power for a second and let go. This is where I caught the sound distortion this morning, but now it sounds really good. Sounds like it should. Of course, you know, we could turn it on while the music's playing. Same thing to turn it off. Just hold the power down for a second and let go. Team C. Um, I did leave all the stock fonts on here. So if you wanted to play around with them, you can. I typically like to do that unless somebody has a lot of sound fonts. Smooth Jedi. So we're gonna Smooth Gray. Let's we'll skip Smooth. over these. Team C. Smooth J Smooth Gray. Smooth. Team C. Smooth Jedi. It's a battery meter. This thing's almost dead. Kylo Ren. So this is the first Kylo Ren. I started off demoing the second one. So you do have a bit of a different um, unstable blade. And with your crystal as well. have a different soundtrack as well I think this is the Kylo theme just like that so yeah we'll take the blade out real quick and then we'll go over taking the battery out because uh, this thing is just different from any other saber really the trade-off I think is very worth it because this thing's super loud um, so we took the battery out we're gonna unscrew this guy again try not to drop it take our wire out and then again you can use your tool here to just pop out that thread that we used and then pull this all the way out and then of course this probably will go off on us Nope, never mind. I bumped your sensitivity, your class sensitivity up to like a 3.8 to accommodate having to do stuff like that. So um, it seems to be working pretty well. Um, but when it comes time to take the battery out, you're not gonna be able to pop it out with your finger. Uh, I like to take something flat and come over here and just carefully pry it out from the positive side, pop it out just like that. Uh, but anyway, that is your saber. That's the functionalities. Let me know if you got any questions and uh, if you don't, and it looks good to you. This guy will go out in the mail today. All right. Thanks, man.